Hey you guys, Essie Kane, the homesteader here today in the kitchen with Essie and Essie is going to be attempting to make her first batch of apple butter. All right, you guys, so you know you have to have apples in order to do this. And my recipe is actually coming out of a canning book called Country Canning and Preserving. And I have been enjoying this book right here along with the other book on canning that I have. So this recipe actually is a recipe for six pounds of apples, but what I'm going to be doing is doubling it up because I have 15 pounds of apples. And I'm gonna try to see if I can get you, if you guys can, if you guys wanna try and snapshot that recipe, maybe you guys can see that, but I will do my best to try to uh, put, put it um, in the description. So, again, this one is a recipe for six pounds. So, what I'm going to be doing is doubling up on each one of the ingredients. And I probably will be using just a little bit more. And I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. Because this one actually requires lemon juice, snaps, apple snaps, liqueur. And that's it. That's the only thing different. So what I'm going to be doing is actually using apple cider vinegar in mine. So what you want to do is start off with your apples um, cut up. Cut them however you want to cut them. Um, if you have a peeler, you could use a peeler. I did not use a peeler. And I'm going to tell you why I didn't use a peeler. Number one, the peeler can be a little bit messy. So when you're using a peeler, you got to have a bowl somewhere to catch all that juice that's coming off, right? So that's another reason. Is it fast? Yeah, it's fast. But you don't have to peel. Check this out, you guys. I've done some research on apple butter. So as you can see, I'm going to be using my roaster. I'm so excited about that. So again, I have 15 pounds of apples. So what I've learned is that you do not have to peel your apples at all. You can skip that step. So what I've learned is that if you leave your peels on there, the peels act, um, acts as a thickener. You don't have to peel your apples, you guys, all right? S-E-K, no. You don't have to do it, all right? And this is a professional chef that um, I learned this from has like a 40 million uh following and i'm not gonna peel mine so as you can see i slice them up any old kind of way if you want to peel them that's fine that's your prerogative um i'm all about easy peasy and cutting some corners wherever i can all right so you know what you're gonna need is your apples you're gonna need white sugar you're gonna need brown sugar and you guys know i just did a video on how to make your own brown sugar dark brown and light brown and you're going to need your apple cider vinegar. You're going to need your cinnamon, your nutmeg, nutmeg, I always say nutmeg, ground cloves. And I actually found this in the store. And I said, I'm going to try this. It's an apple spice. So I'm going to try this. I bet you'll give it a nice kick. And you're going to need salt. And you're going to need your vanilla flavoring extract. And you guys, these are my homemade extracts. This is my cinnamon one, and this is my vanilla one. And they turned out really, really great, you guys. I set them in the closet in the dark in brown paper bags, and look how beautiful they came out. So this one is the cinnamon, and this one is the vanilla. So I look forward to doing another video on these as well. And I think I did um, lime and lemon. I think that's what I did. So that's what you're going to need. So again, I'm doubling up on this recipe. Y'all know Essie freestyles a lot of stuff. So what I'm going to start with is my sugar. This is a lot of sugar, I know. So this is actually, oops, this is actually seven cups of sugar. So remember what I said, I am doubling up, right? And this bag here is probably, I would say, about three cups of brown sugar. And I'm just dumping this in the pot too, because all is going to cook down. That's my beautiful brown sugar. That's the dark brown. 
And then I'm gonna add my light brown as well. And, it's, and this is about three cups as well. Yeah, I would say about three nice cups. All right. So what you're gonna have to do is allow this to cook down slow. And I'm just gonna use, this one is a tablespoon, but I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of salt. Yes, you're gonna need salt. Salt brings out the flavor and everything. And then I'm gonna use a tablespoon of my ground clove. This smells so good. And I'm gonna do probably, I'm gonna do about four, four table tablespoons of my ground cinnamon. And I'm not skimming it off, you guys, like flour. I'm just dumping it in. And you can add to, uh, to your taste as it cooks down. And this is going to take time. It's going to take a few hours for this to cook down. And another thing, I'm going to add like a, a tablespoon of nutmeg, nutmeg. And another thing you're going to need, you guys, is water, apple cider vinegar, and you're going to need a stick blender. Make sure hit, make sure you have a stick blender. This smells really good. This is this is what um called apple pie spice. I'm gonna add that because I know it's gonna add some more flavor to it. So just a tablespoon of that. I don't do too many exact measurements, you guys. All right, and we're gonna add. You don't add a lot of vinegar. I'm gonna add. Let me see, one-fourth, I think it said. Yeah, one-fourth. But, yeah, it said one-fourth, so I'm just going to add a cup because I'm doubling up on mine. And being that I'm doubling up, that it requires, my 15 pounds is requiring three cups of water, which I have to get right now. Actually, a little bit over three cups. Because I have 15 pounds. So I'm just going to do like close to four, four and a half cups of water. All right. So then we're just going to turn this bad boy on. And let me get my extract over here. Let me see if I can pop that. Yep. Oh, that smells good. Wow. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of these. No, I'm going to add another one. So I added uh, three tablespoons of the extract, the vanilla extract, and my 15 pounds. And again, once this cooks down, I'm going to taste it and see if it needs anything else. And you can do the same thing. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna cook down very, very slow. And let me get my top, make sure we are on. So what I'm gonna do is actually start it, I'm gonna start mine at like 325. No, I want to start it at 350. I want to start it at high, and then once it starts to cook, then I will turn it down. Once I see it starts to break down, then I'll turn it down some. So being that this is my first time doing this, shoot, I could have used about three more pounds in here. I was trying to fill this bad boy up. Yeah, next time I think I could do maybe... I may be able to do 20 pounds in here. If it'll take a 26 pound um, turkey, yeah, I think I could get 20 pounds of apples in here with no problem, maybe 25. So you could just give it a little toss and that's it. And let the pot work. Let the pot do what it's gonna do. So we're going to let that cook down. I'm going to come in and stir. 
stirring every now and then. Make sure it's doing what it needs to do. All right? So you guys, y'all know this is not a quick process. And I thought I was going to be able to do my watermelon. But as you can see, I am out of space over here. So I'm probably going to have to do that in the, a separate video. All right, you guys. I know I got cut off on the last clip. But I just wanted to bring you guys an update on the watermelon je jelly. So what I did, you guys, and I have the camera tilted because I wanted you guys to see what's happening here. So I winded up using six quarts of watermelon juice. I did three in each pot, okay? So this pot has already started to cook down and thicken up. Right now, I am skimming off the top. So let me explain to you guys um, the, one second, what you want to do. Okay, so when you're using the pectin, right, you use one box per three quarts. So I use one box of pectin in each pot, okay? Then, being that watermelon is considered on the high acidity side, you have to add acid to it. So I added um, a cup of lemon juice in each pot. So right now, I'm working on this pot right now. This is cooking down. It has cooked down from looking like this to looking like this. So it's thickening up. I also have my jars in the oven at 220. They are being sterilized again. And I'm going to ladle this, this pot up and I'm probably going to get maybe six, no, possibly six, five to six, eight ounce jars, okay? So, Remember to follow the directions on your pectin box. So it is one pectin box per three quart. You should use seven to, I mean, I'm sorry, eight and a half cups of sugar. And you may wind up with 11, um, eight ounce jars. I doubt that very strongly because once this stuff cooks down, it cooks down, okay? So, um, just be mindful of that. A lot of times they say you're going to wind up with this many amount of jars and usually, usually you never do. Okay. So keep in mind of that. So again, three quart size jars in each pot, one box of pectin and eight and a half cups of sugar. You can round it off to nine if you want to. So as you can see, it's thickening up and this is my spoon that I am using. And I had learned this trick from one of the subscribers, Queen Sue, and she told me to put a wooden spoon which keeps your pot from boiling over. And I noticed that that has helped me since I've learned that and she gave me that tip. And it does help, but you wanna be mindful to keep an eye on your pots when you are making jelly or jams, any type of preservative, because there's a lot of sugar and it can boil over and you could possibly scorch yourself if you're not careful. So right now I'm just skimming off the top. Some people skim off the top, some people don't. It's not gonna harm your jelly if you leave it there or your jam. There's another method that you can put like a tablespoon of butter and that's supposed to help with the skim that comes to the top. I haven't tried that method yet. There's so many methods of um, doing jelly and jams. So this is what I'm doing right now. Skimming off the top. And this is gonna be ready probably in another 20 minutes. I'm gonna let it continue to boil down and get a little bit more thicker and as as I ladle this up and it cools off, it will get thicker as well. So let's get over here to the roaster and see what these apples is doing. This roaster is beasty, you guys. Oh my goodness. I have to, I have to hit the road first thing in the morning. This is why I am doing this now because I did not want my juice to go bad and I didn't want to put it in the freezer. So let me show you what the apples is doing real quick. So I'm just going to move this over here. And the apples are cooking down, you guys. Y'all see that? And it smells 
delicious delicious so i'm gonna let this go probably for another two hours let it cook down some more let it begin to evaporate this um water out and um thicken up but it is doing really well so in probably i would say another hour no nah, i would say another two hours let's see yeah maybe another two to three hours this should cook down really well some more thicken up and then i can use my stick blender and actually um puree this up and let it cook down again slowly and evaporate and get much much thicker because you want your apple butter to be thick y'all see that this roaster is beastie so um i have to get this done i have to get rested up because i have to hit the road first thing in the morning to get to one of my events and i want all of these canned up so this is what it's looking like right now i am making progress because at first i said i don't think i'm gonna be able to do this watermelon jelly because it had took up so much space but when i started to move things around and clean up a little bit i said no i think i could get this done but i don't think i would do this again now with all this heat right here this is too much to have to um keep an eye on and you want to be safe in your kitchen because this is very 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 hot okay so if you have one or you plan on getting one just be careful all of this the whole body is hot okay um even the handle is hot you can pick it up but if it ever gets too hot, you might want to use a pot holder. But right now, it's just kind of warm. But the, it's better to be safe than sorry. All right, family? So what I'm going to do is probably come back in a little bit, ladle this pot. This pot is cooking slowly. I have this one on very low. And this eye is probably my lowest eye. So um, when I ladle this up, I will shift this pot over here. I don't like to use this one too much because these are my two hottest eyes on my um, ceramic top. So once I ladle this up, I will shift this over here and then allow this to cook down um, slowly as well. All right, family? So that's what it's looking like right now and I will bring you guys another update, okay? All right, you guys, I'm back, and I got the angle of the camera into the pots. All right, family, so y'all see what it's looking like. I already used my, my stick blender to grind up all the apples, and y'all see the deep chocolate right now? It's looking really, really good. And it is thickening up really, really nice. Um, this is my second pot of the watermelon jelly, and that is boiling down. I did my first pot and I was actually able to get six jars or seven jars. Almost, yes, seven jars. And I probably will get the same amount, six to seven jars out of this pot. But I'm gonna continue to let this cook down probably another hour and a half. And I will be bottling these up. Now you, you have an option. You can water bath your, your preserves, your jelly. Um, I tend to go with the um, no water bath method, which my jars are usually scorching hot coming out of the oven. I flip my jars over for 15 minutes, turn the right side up, and they will pop and seal. You do that as your preference. And I know there is a lot of people um, in the canning world that does things differently. Some people um, follow the instructions by T. And then some people um, do other new methods that still work. But a lot of people want to go and follow the rules of the, uh, what is it, the FDA or whatever it is. But um, I have tried this method before with my other um, jellies and jams. And it works. But again, if you want to water bath, you can water bath for 15, 30 minutes. And I think what I'm going to do is actually water bath the apple jelly and um, see how that works. And remember, when you water bath, you can water bath in any type of pot as long as your um, jars is fully covered um, with water, okay? So make sure you just um, follow the directions and you do what your heart's desire. This is how I do it over here. And... And I think that's what I'm going to do again. So, 
as you can see again it has really thickened up it has a beautiful um chocolate brown um color and it smells delicious so i'm gonna give that a few more minutes and again if you are new to the oyster um roaster oven please be very careful this gets extremely hot the whole body of it okay family so keep note of that and make sure when you are doing your jellies and your jams that you keep an eye on your pot because you do not want this sugar boiling over and possibly scorching you or messing up your stove okay so make sure you keep an eye on your um preserves or your jelly that is boiling and also when you are doing your apple butter and if you're using the, the oyster roaster oven make sure you continuously stir because you don't want to burn your apple butter okay again this gets extremely hot it's not like a crock pot okay <laughs> so make sure you guys remember that and i will see you guys in a little bit when i um ladle um the apple butter up in the jars i have more jars in my oven over here that are um being sanitized again on 220 and always remember when you are dealing with your jellies and your jams or your apple butter make sure your jars is hot you cannot put hot jelly apple butter and cool jars you will crack your jars so make sure your jars is coming out of the sanitizing hot water or they're coming out of the oven i love doing mine in the oven because it, it gives me more space i don't have to worry about a whole um pot of water and having to take them out like that so you can also sanitize your jars in your oven all right you guys so sek note all right family so i'm gonna give this a little bit more time and then i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna bottle them up and i will be done for my canning session and this here is about ready i'm going to skim a little bit more off of here because there's some more there and then probably in another hour or so this will be ready all right family so i'll see you guys in a bit all right you guys sek is back and now it is time to ladle ladle my apple butter and it has cooked down to a nice thickness. It to me is still a little not not that loose, but it is still a little loose. So I figure after it cools off, it will thicken up. But um, it's been cooking for several hours, and it is beautiful. It smells good. It tastes good. So I'm looking forward to trying this over the weekend and next week. So um. I think the next time that I uh, do the apple butter, what I'm going to do to try to speed it up is actually drain off most of the liquid, like the water that you add in so that it can thicken up even faster. And one of the things I wanted to tell you guys, when you puree it, make sure you get it smoothed out really nice, okay? So that you don't wind up with clumps. And remember what I told you, you don't have to peel the skin off. You can cook it down with the skin on. So remember that you don't have to do that because the skin acts as a thickener. I would say the skin might act as a, a form of pectin, kind of like um, strawberries. They say strawberries, when you do strawberry preserves, it creates its own pectin, like when you do orange marmalade as well. It creates its own pectin so remember that but I for this to be my first time doing apple butter I am super pleased with the turnout of it and I can't wait to do another batch and my next batch I'm really gonna um, uh, do I'm gonna try to fit about 25 pounds in this pot because it starts out way up there um, and I did have lots of room where I could have added another um, bag of apples, like three, five, five more pounds. I did 15. So I'm going to attempt to do 20 or 25 pounds the next time. Yes, it is work. And you have to be patient with it. The same with um, jellies and marmalades and jams. You have to be patient with it. 
and really patient with this apple butter so um i definitely look forward to doing it again probably in another couple of weeks but let me tell you something this stuff tastes good it reminds me when i did my my orange marmalade for the first time i was like oh my gosh my kids was like this stuff is addicting that stuff was delicious the orange marmalade that was a big hit in my house so i'm looking forward to sharing these with friends and family and i'm looking forward to making another batch okay you guys you see my um, watermelon jelly over here? Remember I told y'all about the flip, the flip method in my first video where I did watermelon last year. And again, I put that out there. If you want to try the technique, it is a, a good technique. Um, when you do your watermelon jelly or whatever jelly you do, you can actually skip the water bath method and I know there's people in the canning world that's probably going to say, oh, you shouldn't skip the water bath method and things of that nature. I don't really want to go there. But I do know that flip method for 15 minutes works. And it, your jars will seal. So you might hear some of my jars pop. Because as soon as I got over here, they started popping. And most of mine have sealed already. I think all of them. So I wind it up with. 11 jars, 11 16 ounce jars, okay? So that means I could have had 22 eight ounce jars where I probably could have been able to give more away that way. But I had these already sterile, sterile up and ready to go. So that's why I went with the eight ounce, I mean a 16 ounce. So I think I explained that the early part of the video with the pectin, you need the pectin with your watermelon um, jelly. So if whatever ounces you are using, I would say go buy the um, the directions on the pectin box because like I said, I did, did I do six? Yep, six quarts. So six quarts, I needed two boxes of pectin, but y'all saw in the video that I used two separate pots to do them. So I would say if you wanna do a recipe, Go buy the recipe on that's on the box and do 32, 32 um, uh, quart size, which is 32 ounces. Yeah, do quart sizes. If you have that much watermelon juice, I still have probably, I might have about six more jars in that refrigerator. Then again, I might have four because we have been um, drinking it. And I know my sons took a few, I think I seen them take two jars the other day. So we did enjoy drinking them. And like I said, I think I have a few more in there. So we'll probably just drink them. I might even take them on the road tomorrow uh, to my event that I have to be at. So I am wrapping it up for this evening with this candy. And I'm gonna get me a good old shower and I'm gonna call it a night. So you guys know how to can, you know how to ladle up, you know how to have your um, vinegar water to wipe your rims off, wipe around your jar so you can get a good seal and put your rings on. And again, I sterilized my jars inside the oven and I washed them. So I did two methods of that, but I do love sterilizing them in the oven and again, you want your jars to be hot when you are adding anything hot in them. So I love that method of keeping my jars nice and sanitized in the oven at 220. You guys should try it. All right, you guys, it's getting to the end. Right now we had nine jars. Let's see, might be able to get a 10th one in here. I have to do some scraping. So definitely I will try it a little bit different next time so that I can get rid of mo most of the moisture and get it to evaporate a little bit faster and to get that that nice uh, thickness so I will do that next time and I know there's so many methods to making this 
this uh, apple butter. There are tons and tons of recipes out there. So if you guys wanna try it, it won't be hard to find one. And I will do my best, cause I ain't that great when it comes to that. So I will do my best to try to put down a recipe on the apple butter and also my watermelon. But remember, I had to um, tweak this recipe that came out of the book. The book recipe went by six pounds of apples and I had 15 pounds of apples. So I had to triple it up. All right, that's about it, you guys. Let's see, yep. Remember, you want to leave that headspace too. Don't forget about that headspace. And I'm gonna fill up one of these all the way up because that's gonna be mine. And again, if you want a water bath, you can water bath 15 to 30 minutes. Most preserves is 15 water bath and it's 15 to 30 minutes. If you want to go longer, I'm sure it's not going to hurt. All right. Yay! Okay, family. Get my vinegar. We're going to wipe around here. I have my lids right here. And then I'm going to put my rings on. Remember, this is hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. A lot of people like to flip. So they don't add the um what they wiped off back on. So you can do that too. So my lids have been sanitized already as well. And I have my little magnet to pick them up. Y'all done seen this a thousand times. All right. So, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, video. Um, when it comes to making preserves and spreads and jellies, jams, it is work. You have to be patient. And this was a lot of work because it was hecka hot in my kitchen. All these burners was running. Yep, all of them have sealed. I should have got that camera rolling before so you guys can hear how they pop. So the flip method is you turn your jars over after you fill them up, put your rings on and your, your lids, and then um, you flip it for about 15 minutes, and then you turn it right side up, and you patiently wait for them to pop and they they pop they will seal and i'm sure you guys seen that on some of my other videos I'm so hot you guys so next time I do it I'm not gonna do all of this at one time but I was so excited and anxious to do it that's why I did it and I really wanted to bring this video to you guys all right. 
And I am going to do the flip method on these as well. I'm going to turn them over for 15 minutes and then I'm going to flip them right side up and they're going to pop, pop, pop and they're going to seal. I'm going to sit them right here next to my melons. All right. These jars is hot, you guys. I'm over here. And I think what I'm gonna do, you guys, is I'm gonna bring you, I'm gonna try to bring you back. And I think I, I hear them popping. I'm going to turn them over so you can hear them pop and seal. That's what I try to do. Let me get this up. Okay, my oven is off. All right, family. So that is my canning session for today. And I'm going to clean up. I'm actually going to move this back over here. Get my vinegar. I'm gonna move that over here. And I'm gonna clean up my stove just a little bit. I already did, but so this is what I do, the flip method. Like so. You give it 15 minutes, turn them back right side up, and they will begin to seal, and you will hear that pop. I promise you. So, I actually got 11 jars of apple cider, um, sorry, apple butter and watermelon. So, I got 22 16 ounce jars of apple butter, watermelon, jelly. Okay, remember what I tell you, all these things is hot. All right, so the flip method 15 minutes, turn them right side up, and they're gonna go pop, 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 pop. All right, family, so this is S.E.K. The Homestead. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this canning session. And it is hecka hot. I feel like I'm outside. It is so hot. But um, I enjoyed doing this video for you guys. And remember what I said. Um, make sure you go and follow your directions. There are plenty, and plenty, plenty, plenty of recipes out there. Um, but I will do my best to try to list everything in my description box. But please don't hold me accountable for that, all right? So, in the next 15 minutes, I will flip these. And hopefully, I can catch it on video for you guys. Because it is late right now. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in to SCK's Homesteading Journey. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you tried, tried uh, apple butter before. And what types of techniques are you using to um, get the best apple butter that you can get. But I know what I will be doing different next time. All right, family. So this is Essie Cato Homesteader. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Essie will see you guys on the next video. Peace.